Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. It was the early morning of the 29th of December, 2024, at the Bangkok Suvarnabhumi International Airport, where the Jeju Air Flight 2216 was preparing for its flight. It was a scheduled international passenger flight operated by Jeju Air from Suvarnabhumi Airport in Bangkok, Thailand to Muan International Airport in Muan County, South Korea. The flight's standard time of departure was 1.30 a.m., but apparently it was delayed a bit for unknown reasons. It was just a routine work of just another day for the pilots as well as the crew member until the upcoming hours of disaster that marked the South Korea's second deadliest crash after the Korean Air 747 incident at the Guam Island after 1997. The aircraft was parked at stand Foxtrot 6 of the main terminal, and prior to its final trip, the mandatory aircraft pre-flight maintenance was recorded to have been done in 28 minutes. The aircraft involved was a Boeing 737-800 variant registered as HL8088 and was equipped with two CFM International CFM 56-7B engines and remarkably, it was a former Ryanair aircraft that was 15-year-old. Of the 175 passengers, two were Thai nationals and the other, 173, was South Korean. Out of six crew members, two were the cockpit crew and the rest, four of them, were cabin crew. And in total, it was 181 souls on board the Jeju Air 2216. It is expected that the aircraft must have roughly filled 16 tons of fuel with an en route burn of approximately 12 tons considering the jet stream over the Asia. This is the approximate flight route that had been carefully compared with the datas of Flight Radar 24. Time is 2.11 a.m. and the aircraft starts pushback from the stand Foxtrot 6. aircraft starts taxiing by 2.18 a.m. after taking roughly six minutes for a successful engine start and disconnecting pushback truck. The aircraft is cleared for taxi to holding point Echo 19er, runway 02 right via Tango 15, Delta Echo Echo 19er. Jeju Air Flight 2216 is cleared to take off from runway 02 right. And the sad part is that neither the pilots nor the passengers knew it was their last takeoff.
everything was going right and the aircraft was cruising at 37,000 feet and flew over Taipei, the capital of Taiwan. After three hours, 45 minutes after takeoff, the aircraft starts to descend towards its destination over the East China Sea. Flaps are extended and the landing gear is lowered on the initial approach to runway 01 for landing. When the aircraft was 500 feet for the final approach, and that's when we lost the connection with the aircraft and whatever happened after that, is completely databased on the internet and possible outcomes of that. Suddenly, the aircraft encounters a bird strike at 8.58 a.m. The pilots immediately retracts the landing gear and the flaps in order to perform a go-around, and it is a part of the procedure. Immediately after the bird strike, the pilot declares Mayday call at 8.59 a.m. After the failure of engine two, the pilot's very unusually makes 180 degree turn and approaches runway 19 at 9 a.m. This chart clearly shows how the pilots maneuvered the aircraft, and that depicts what actually happened. By 9.1 a.m., the pilots get clearance to land from the north onto runway 19. Apparently, the reason behind the rush by the pilots for the touchdown was still a mystery, as we don't have the final report of what have happened, and notably, the flaps and landing gear were not extended, not to mention but the 737 can manage to produce thrust that is enough for a safe landing. But yeah, as said, it's the final report that has the answers for our questions. The aircraft was coming at a very high speed as the flaps were not extended. At 9.03 a.m., the touchdown of the aircraft took place. And the one more thing that made the scenario even worst is the late touchdown after utilizing 70% and that's pretty late to stop the aircraft, as Muan County Airport runway was just 2,500 meters.
My sincere condolences to the 179 souls, including the pilot and the two crew who were perished and their family who lost their beloved ones. Also, this concrete wall was a very surprising one at the runway threshold area as it raises the safety concerns in Muan Airport and other South Korean airports. The absence of this wall could have at least prevented this big disaster. <laughs>